Jack Cruz, and I came to share an idea with you that actually may just save your life. The reason why I say that is because it saved mine. In 2006, I was at a spine meeting in Birmingham, Alabama, and I stood up to give a speech, and upon standing up, I tore my right knee meniscus. Uh, I needed help getting to the podium to give my speech. It was pretty humiliating. Um, one of my good friends was there, and his wife happened to be a biotech person, and she told me, I know exactly why that happened to you, and I'm going to send you a book and six papers. When you get home, because I know how you grew up, I want you to read these and then call me. And she made it very specific that I needed to read the book first. The name of the book was The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari by Robin Sharma. I read the book just like she told me, and then I read all the research papers. And inside that book, if you don't know anything about it, it's about a lawyer who had a heart attack in the middle of a courtroom, and this guy had gobs of money. He left his law practice, went to the Himalaya Mountains, and changed his life with the Sherpas. When he was up there, he stayed for about three years and had many transformations occur to him. He came back to his law practice, and uh, every one of his partners noticed that he looked 25 years younger. He was in phenomenal shape. He looked unbelievable, and he just looked like he was a new guy. So I had this thought when I was reading the book. What if this wasn't a fable? What if it was actually really possible? And I looked at the, the six papers that they brought me. And they were all about cytokines and leptin. And leptin controls energy balance in the body. In fact, it controls it in the brain. And you can see back in 2006, when I stood up, I was six foot two, 357 pounds at the time. So I knew the reason I tore my knee meniscus was tied to the leptin story. It got a little bit more interesting. I started to think about Julian Battle's longevity issue. And I said, you know, this is kind of interesting because the Nobel Prize was given for telomere biology in 2009. So I just kept putting things together. I thought to myself when I put everything synthesized in one place, was it possible that obesity was an inflammatory brain condition? And was it possible that I could do brain surgery on myself without a scalpel and fix myself? So I constructed a, something called the Leptin Reset. And I never published this until last year on my blog. I kept it very quiet in the hospital because I didn't want anybody to think I was nuts. I use that and I use cold because at the top of the Himalayan mountains, it's pretty cold. And Sherpas live up there. It's for the last 25,000 years, they're adapted to the cold. 25, 30 years ago, if somebody would have told you that someone could be completely deaf and be able to hear, you would have laughed at them off this stage. Now we know there's cochlear implants that are out there that actually do just that. And they put an implant into the brain and it rewires the brain. My idea to fix me was to use my vagus nerve in my gut and use circadian biology to change timing. Sounded pretty out there, and I also used cold, something called cold thermogenesis. In three months, I lost 77 pounds. In 11 months, I lost 133 pounds. After about a year and a half, I, I had lost 157 pounds. Now, this made a huge impact on not only my practice, the people I worked with, but my family. But you can see the picture up there. This picture is a picture on, left, on this side here is my son who was 15. On the other end is my nephew, Kyle. We went on a trip. This is after I had dropped 77 pounds to Walt Disney World. And you know kids usually want to go to Disney World and go on all the rides. They sat down at a table with me and they wanted to know what the hell I did. And I told them in four hours that I could change their life. They were the first two people I ever tried the leptin prescription with cold thermogenesis on. My son proceeded to lose 60 pounds in six weeks. He never asked me a question. He just said, Dad, tell me what to do. I ruined him as a child, 
and my goal was to fix him, and I did. A well, gentleman on the right's my nephew. He was 268 pounds at 21 years old, and he's now a Navy SEAL, and he did that in one year using the same protocol. So I knew I was kind of onto something, so I went back to the pathway, and I said, you know, there's a second part of this experiment that I could run. This longevity thing really got me. I went back and read some more about Elizabeth Blackburn's work in 2009, and I started drawing my blood. This was an easy part of the experiment. I just drew my blood to see if I could get younger. Guess what? I did. And things kept happening. I started trying to synthesize all these things together. And as you guys know, I'm a neurosurgeon here in Nashville, Tennessee. I deal with a lot of chronic pain. The other part of this pathway that was in this book fascinated me. It basically said that our deep ancestors who came out of the ocean were cold adapted mammals to get to the food source at an evolutionary bottleneck that we've all faced before. They had to go into the water to get those omega-3 fish. To do that, they had to get numb. Their central nervous system had to do something special. I was very interested in that as a neurosurgeon. Something interesting happened. This is where Ted brings it home. Uh, TEDx had a guy named Wim Hof come on in Amsterdam, give a talk. He's known as the Ice Man. He lives in, in the Arctic Circle. Packs himself in ice, does all these amazing things, tells people that his brain is incredible and this and that and the other thing, but he, he's done some amazing things. He's injected himself with, with bacteria, and with the cold, he never got an infection. He actually has climbed up to Everest from zero feet all the way to 26,000 feet in shorts and a T-shirt with no food and water. The next day, he was able to run a marathon for 26.2 miles. Now, I know all of you guys are starting to think, this is kind of out there. But let me bring it home to you. You know a couple of people who actually use these pathways. Lance Armstrong, Michael Phelps, the Sherpas, the NASA astronauts. Let me tell you a couple of stories. The, the tie that ties them all together, they all use the cold to do the things they did. In fact, in Lance Armstrong's case, he thinks that Bristol-Myers Squibbs helped his cancer. Remember, he had testicular cancer, went through his brain. Carries a very high mortality. Lance had freezers in his house in Austin. And that's how he trained, and that's how he won. And that's how he got unbelievable abilities. Michael Phelps in Beijing swam for 12 hours a day in 50-degree water. That's how he trained. Okay? The Sherpas have lived on the top of Everest for 25,000 years. You all know that they can do amazing things. They can take people up to the, the mountain with hardly anything, and their abilities are legendary. In fact, they're so legendary that when Neil Armstrong went to the moon, in five days he came back and lost 30 pounds, and they had 50% more food left in the module. No one could figure out why, including NASA. But guess what? They went to the Sherpas and found out exactly why. There is some kind of pathway in all of us, but no one knows about it. I found it, and it was in that book, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. Bringing the whole story home here to Nashville, in 2011, one of the general surgeons that works with me in the hospital, his dad is a neurosurgeon here at a big downtown hospital you all know. He got acute spinal cord compression and was almost uh, quadriplegic. He thought his career was over. It happened in the operating room. He almost dropped the knife. He could no longer operate. He was 37 years old. He went to this big hospital, and uh, he had surgery. He didn't do well. Um, he uh, was devastated, in fact. One of his partners is a good friend of mine, and he said, look, Brett, you need to go over to see Jack and you need to just listen to him. So he came in, and I thought I was going to have to tear down some dogma. I didn't have to tear anything down. He was broken. I told him, Brett, if you listen to me, I think I can change your life. I used all the things that I learned about in this pathway that I fixed me and fixed my kids, fixed my family. And in six weeks, he was running. He was able to use his arms. He was back at work, and he's a completely new person. Then TEDx hit another home run. Iowa City, 2000, 
11, just passed. Terry Walls, a physician at Iowa State with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, used the diet that's selected for in this ancient pathway that I'm telling you about. It's called the Paleolithic diet. She completely reversed her MS using this diet. She's actually running an, NHI, an NIH trial about it, and I strongly recommend you watch her TED Talk. It is truly transformational. But when I saw that, I said, you know what? I've got to step up my game. It's time to let the world know some of the things that I've found. Remember I told you I'm a neurosurgeon. And I'm very, very interested in chronic pain. There's a lot of chronic pain out there. My idea was to do the first evolutionary directed procedure on a human being. Had one problem. The anesthesiologist would not let me give them anesthesia. Not only that, they wouldn't let me inject them with antibot, oh, I should say bacteria, to try to infect them. Because that last part of the pathway said that we would have ultimate immunity and we'd have uh, pain-free uh, activity. So when I couldn't find a patient, I went back to my playbook. I decided to do the experiment on myself. So I had another problem. I had two choices that were safe. I could take my wisdom teeth out or I could do surgery. I used to be a dentist. I had my wisdom teeth taken out. Not a good choice. So I didn't need any surgery, so I decided I had to make myself a surgical candidate. So in October, I went to see a local plastic surgeon who I know from Skyline Hospital here in Nashville. And he hadn't seen me in 10 years, and he thought I looked great and this and that. He goes, what the hell are you doing here, Jack? And he says, I don't think you need anything. And I told him, look, I've worked really hard. I want this. I want this. And I got what I wanted. But see, I knew I didn't need surgery. And I'd never told my family about what I was doing. And I went home, and I ate the diet that my profession tells you to eat. That's the standard American diet. That's the diet that our government, the USDA, tells you is healthy. You know, all the healthy grains, the polyunsaturated fats, the canola oil, all that. That's the stuff that gets you fat, okay? It's exactly opposite the Paleolithic diet. I ate that diet for two months. My wife didn't know anything. I gained 25 pounds. I hit it pretty well. No one, including my wife, until January 8th of 2012 knew what I was up to. And on January 9th, 2012, this year in Nashville, Tennessee, I went into a surgery center and I let a surgeon operate on me without any anesthesia. Before the surgery, I took MRSA. For any of those non-physicians in the audience, that's methicillin-resistant staph aureus. Really nasty stuff. The stuff that's in ICUs. I injected it all over my torso and in my belly. I then had a six-hour surgery only to remove two pounds of fat, if you can believe that. Uh, when I woke up, I have to tell you, I thought that I was tough. It was rough. My wife didn't know what was going on. My daughter had no clue what was going on. In fact, my son, who's at college right now, doesn't know what you now know. After uh, I got home and I was miserable, I told my wife to go into our closet. And she was frazzled. I said, there's a tub in there. I want you to throw it on the bed. She threw it on the bed. She goes, what's going on? My daughter helped her. And I told, and I didn't do this nicely, I was screaming at this time with tears in my face. And I said, go into the freezer. There's 120 pounds of ice in there. Go get them immediately. She goes, we don't have any ice. I said, I put it in there last night. She went in, got the ice, both of them broke it up, threw it in the tub, and threw it on me. In three minutes, 
I was pain-free. Completely pain-free. Then uh, I sat my little 11-year-old daughter down on the bed and told her what I did and why I did it. I showed her 12 incisions on my body that were 30 inches long. For six weeks, from here to here, I looked like an eggplant. <clears throat> I never had any pain and never took any pain medicine. All that stuff I injected in me, the MRSA, I never got an infection. So I was pretty happy because I couldn't disprove my theory. So what did I decide to do next? I said, well, now that I know this works in humans and now I know this pathway, every single step is in us, I need to use this in my practice. So I had a patient who I took care of for two years, Mr. Lonnie Daniels. I told him he was not a surgical candidate. He was a type 2 diabetic. He was 80 years old, and I told him, Lonnie, if you eat the diet that I tell you to eat and you agree to let me freeze you in the hospital, I'll operate on you. On January 27th, I took him to surgery, three weeks after my own surgery when I was still swollen and numb. I placed eight pedicle screws in his back. You can see the screws right up there. This operation, if I was to do in any healthy person in this audience, would be a four-month recovery. The screws are four inches long. He had eight of them placed in his back. Uh, operation took about four hours. I put him on a frozen blanket, 40 degrees, for three days. Lonnie left the hospital in three days, went to rehab five days, was playing the banjo in Skylight Rehab for other patients. He came back to see me 10 days after his surgery and handed me his Percocet prescription grack. He says, Doc, I don't need this. I'm going to tell you something. As a neurosurgeon, I could not believe that. Any neurosurgeon in this city will tell you the same thing. It's absolutely remarkable. I realized at that point that I had found something really important. From that day forward, everything in my practice changed. I now use the Paleolithic diet and cold thermogenesis to help anybody I possibly can with this protocol. My idea that I want to share with you today is that sometimes very unconventional things can lead to remarkable results that will help millions of people. My profession has lost its way. We need to stop talking about these randomized control trials that, that we espouse and go back to the North Star for our biology. That's evolutionary biology. When we use that, it's just a game changer for us. My last point to you is an ideation without execution leads to deletion. I doubt after this experiment that this idea can be extinguished. The point that I make to all of you here today is that optimal health is no longer a mystery for our species. It's now a choice. Thank you.